Rome, summer 100 BC. Numerius Emilius Scaverus, a seasoned general and one of the last in the south of Persia, or as some recently say, Eastern Rome. He arrived with the legendary Africanus and another general from West Africa. They deployed approximately two legions, the exact number is unknown, with the task of advancing into the heart of Persia. Their goal was Jerusalem and Damascus. Currently in the southern borderlands of Rome, the Lepidus Legion is finally reunited. The winter was cold, it is now summer, time for war, the right moment to attack the city of Arbila. Decimus Emilius Lepidus has received new orders from Rome. The Eastern Roman Empire is under self-governance, and Decimus Emilius Lepidus has command over the southern border. Rome will not send any new legions to the east, but many cohorts are still on their way to the heartland. Unfortunately, due to the long march through the desert from West Africa across the shores of Africa, Africanus died along the way from a heart attack and was consumed by the desert. The two remaining generals were now left without their experienced leader, but they continued their conquest. Fortunately, the south of Persia is controlled by wealthy high-ranking pashas. They have gilded fortresses and thousands of slaves. These are the free Persian cities under autonomous rulers. Scaverus was one of the two remaining generals from the once proud Africanus Legion. Today, his spies have discovered another free Persian city, and Scaverus is on his way to Hybes. He has been in the southern part of Persia for a long time, and his men are tired, as is he. Upon arriving in Hybes, he encounters two Seleucid imams, Philomelos Sephenkos and Hagisandros Palus Syriacs. A battle ensues at the gates. Welcome to Rome Total War. The enemy army is divided into several parts. Scavers tackles each part individually. The first army on his path seems to be just a decoy, even though the captain has capable troops. Another army approaches under the two opposing generals. After the fall of Africanus, the legion split in two, and Scaverus took charge of his part. He leads dangerous Bolivian legionnaires accompanied by Gallic Germanic archers and cavalry, and he also has a reserve army in a nearby city. However, here he is on his own. He has been in Persia for a long time, although he never made it to the heartland. His cohorts are weary. He has traveled extensively through the desert. The war against the Seleucids has been going on for over 10 years, or maybe it was 20. Scaverus is a man of few words. He orders his legionnaires to march. His legion from the glory days of the Polybian reform consists of an arrangement of Triarii, Hastati, and Principes, reinforced by Germanic archers and the Greek phalanx, prepared for any opponent. He attacks the decoy army with everything he has, spears flying through the air. The enemy is caught off guard. The enemy captain bravely holds his ground with his phalanx, but Scaverus maneuvers his cavalry behind the enemy lines. His equites are significantly thinned out, but it will be enough. He understands the advantages of cavalry and rides in a wild arc. The horses snort and empty their bowels to run faster. The cavalry falls upon the enemy's rear with turbocharged force. Men are struck from behind and impaled. Chaos ensues as everyone screams wildly. The enemy captain is swiftly overrun and disappears somewhere in the midst of legionnaires. He is no longer seen, only heard, the enemy flees. They are pitiful cowards. The fleeing soldiers are trampled. But the battle is not yet over, another enemy army appears on the horizon. Generals Philomelos Sephenkos and Hagisandros Palus Syriacs lead their Persian Seleucid army. Scaverus pursues the fleeing Persians with his cavalry. The Roman troops are weary and form up once again. They have a moment to catch their breath before the final clash. Legionnaires pray to their gods, others compose a poem or a last message to their loved ones. The sun scorches, ammunition is scarce. The last battle begins. The enemy generals advance with a multitude of phalanxes. The phalanxes slowly approach the Roman troops. But the Romans still have ammunition and unleash their pila. A Roman pilum is a special type of throwing spear used by Roman soldiers during the time of the Roman Empire. The term pila is the plural of pilum. The pilum was a widely used throwing weapon design of the Roman army. 
It consisted of a shaft approximately 2 meters long with an iron point attached. The point of the pylum had a slender shape with a sharp tip and a broader shaft portion. The function of the pylum was versatile. In combat, the goal of the pylum was to break through enemy lines and confuse the enemy. The pylum was thrown from a short distance and often got stuck in the shields of the opposing soldiers. Due to the specific construction of the shaft, the pylum would bend after penetrating the opponent's shield, rendering it unusable. This made the enemy's shield heavier and more unwieldy, allowing Roman soldiers to gain an advantage in close combat. Furthermore, the pylum could also be used to attack enemy cavalry. By becoming lodged in the horse or saddle of the rider, the pylum could slow down the enemy or even throw them off their horse. Overall, the pylum was an extremely effective weapon and an important component of the tactical capabilities of the Roman army. It helped Roman soldiers achieve success in battles by either directly weakening the enemy or disrupting their formation and mobility. After Scavers finishes dealing with the fleeing enemies, he returns and intends to rejoin his main army. He has few legionnaires with him and expects to encounter the Persian Seleucid generals who stand between him and his army. A battle ensues. Roman legionnaires from the left flank rush to help, resulting in a second battleground. The generals engage in a wild tango. It becomes chaotic. Scavers is attacked by both generals. His equites are decimated. He fights fiercely. The enemy cataphract riders prove superior to the Roman cavalry. Scavers fights for his life. Roman legionnaires rush to aid and attack the enemy riders from behind. In the midst of the chaos, Scavers sees his riders fall, one after another, dying heroic deaths. The sounds of death and horse screams mix together. Horses empty their bowels. Blades clash. Scavers points upward to the sky, and as gazes lower again, he is gone. With only four remaining riders, Scavers manages to escape through the center. Roman legionnaires now take on these Persian generals, surrounded by them. Despite being surrounded by Roman legionnaires, the cataphract riders continue to hold their ground. Scavers' cavalry has been defeated. It is a heavy blow. The legionnaires visibly struggle to defeat the heavy cataphract riders. What will Scavers do? What will happen next? Stay tuned. Next time on Total War Europe Barbarum Endgame. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like.